Morning. We got trouble in paradise here, guys. And we've lost a pin out of our trailer plug. There's supposed to be a screw in there to hold the wire in. Well, I was like, where's that screw going? It's gotta be here somewhere. Well, just my luck. It is there. <laughs> Give these all a nip up. Just fixing the heck out of things again, guys. It was obviously very technical. <laughs> Hey guys, I am just loading up going around. We had a tree fall down oh, probably a couple of years ago that was laying out in one of our paddocks over here, which Dad sort of pushed it out the way with the loader a while ago, but we need some more firewood anyway at the house, and it hasn't really rained here for a couple of weeks, so plus it's a nice sunny 16 degrees with a northerly wind today, so a good day to go and uh, cut a bit of, bit of extra wood for the house and clean up that old tree, but I didn't want to, that's not what I started this video for, I'm not going to film myself um, cutting up wood for a whole video, but um, it's just more so a bit of an update. Uh, we are in the midst of dry July, unfortunately. We have had 14.5mm of rain for the month, I think it's the 21st today. We might have a shot of 1-5 to five later in the week, but that's not even at half average. We're not even going to get anywhere near half average for the month, so that's pretty atrocious. It's not really a big deal if you're going to have a dry month, July's the month to have a dry one because it's usually cold and nothing's really growing much and the crops are small so they're not using much moisture but yeah, not not ideal plus because it's dried up now the frosts have started as well we've been getting smacked by frost every second morning at the moment which is not ideal either but anyway things are still looking good and uh, hopefully we can uh, pick up some decent rains in August before we head into spring yeah, I know. They're just about as high as you. There you go. Just go see that. Oh, no! You get a sting from that. Stand up. Stand up. <laughs> it's a forest of nettles. There's too much stinging nettles for making more. There is too many stinging nettles I, there. I bought a bucket of guys I have a clue. Are you going to use that to pick up some wood for me? Um, no, it's a bit too full. It's a bit too full? Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, I'm gonna chop some wood up here, hopefully. You need a bigger bucket. Oh, I got a big bucket on the back of the ute. Okay. It's called a trailer. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know how are, are you gonna help fill it? Uh, yeah. Okay, that sounds good. You need to only cut a bit for me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you can just do the small bits. Yeah. Alright. There's our victim down there, that old tree. Hopefully it's half decent. We're back guys on a beautiful 
Friday afternoon at the moment. It's quite nice out there. It's quite calm. It's it's not too bad for a winter's day, but we have a shot at a measly one to five millimeters of rain tomorrow. So what I'm actually about to do is jump in the spreader and go and put a bit more urea down on my canola because it just looks like it's struggling. Well, I'll get out here and have a look in a sec because I mean, I'm right next to the paddock anyway. I've just got to put the auger in the field bin here and we'll go get the tractor and uh, we'll go out and spread. We're just going to put another about 50, 60 kilos over it. You really need to have five millimeters of rain to wash it in, preferably more, which, you know, we might not even get that, which is why I'm not really going to spread too much, but it's either I spread some urea, which we've got heaps of it sitting in the bin here now, or i got to go and do a foliar application of UAN or something like that. And I don't really want to decontaminate the boom. That's going to take me hours to do that. Plus, I don't want to have to go and buy 2,000 litres of UAN to go and do this. So I'm just going to spread 50, 60 kilos out here now. We're going to hope that we get five millimetres of rain tomorrow just to wash it in. There's... I don't know, it needs it. My first attempt at canola has not been a good one really, I don't think. I mean, I did do it the hardest way possible on a seven plus ton wheat crop stubble, so it was naturally gonna be really deficient in nitrogen. It just is what it is. So we gotta try and help it out. We gotta do something. So here we are, we are standing out in it. It's just so staggered, this crop. Some of it's just really, really small. It's a little patchy, the germination in spots. I mean, overall, it's not too bad, but I don't know. It's just, it's not a nice deep green. It's not filling in as well as I really want. It's just not really growing. Like people have put uh, their canola in on vetch stubbles from last year. Their, their crops are just huge already. And I don't know, this is just struggling a little bit. It's, uh, yeah, I feel like I it, it sort of looked like it germinated well enough and I, I thought it would fill in a little bit better, but there's some clumps of straw and stuff around that have just, you know, you know, canola is such a tiny seed that it just really doesn't take much to stop it from coming up in certain spots. And, you know, then you come down here and you look at this, like, what's going on here? I just got these, like, little tiny plants still coming up. I don't know, it's just been so staggered. I mean, overall, the crop looks decent enough. I just wish that it just needs to get going. <laughs> Also getting a really delightful late flush of ryegrass. Look at all the one leaf ryegrass coming up in here at the moment. Ah oh, well, you live and you learn. I didn't want to go and put barley in there because I knew there was a lot of ryegrass in there, but ultimately canola is not the best crop to clean your paddock up with because you can only use so much um, grass-free herbicide and that on it. So yeah, it's all just a learning experience, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I've learned something new this year. <laughs> it's good. Let's go get a spreader. It looks nice enough from back here. I just wish that it had moved along a little bit better. That's all. And I think it all just comes down to fertilizer. Fertilizer, fertilizer, fertilizer. This stuff loves to be fed. And uh, I tell you, like I said, I'm learning something.
And of course, naturally, now that I've committed to doing this, they're talking the rain down tomorrow. We're back to zero to two mil, so. We're just gambling. We're big gamblers here. <laughs> we'll see how we go. I feel like I have absolutely assaulted this canola with fertilizer this year. 350 kilos so far. I think, well, that's including what I'm putting out now. Surely that's enough. We are well and truly on the back half now. 29 hectares to go. So the reason I'm running the gauntlet with this now is because the earlier the better with canola. The earlier you can get the fertilizer on, the better. There's no rain forecast really in the short term or into the medium term. So, you know, we're gonna be getting into August by then and it's just gonna to be too late really. So I'd rather just run the gauntlet now with 50 kilos. One thing's for sure, I'm either gonna look like a hero tomorrow or an absolute tool if it doesn't rain. <laughs> I'll settle for three or four mil though. We'll see how we go. Looks like I might be finishing the last 20 hectares under lights. Oh yeah, worth a mention as well, after I did the steering joints and that on here, this thing is steering amazingly now. It was doing a bit of these ones down the paddock before, understandably, because those steering joints were so bad, but I couldn't get over about 15, 16 k's before without it getting the absolute wobble as well. I'm sitting on 19, 20 k's now and she's just Food for you, Mr. Canola. Just being straight up greedy now. Hero. I look like a hero. Five would have been better, but four's pretty good. We'll take that. Also, we're setting fashion trends here. Nice. What's going on guys? Uh, this morning, I'm just gonna head over to the chemical shed over here, have a bit of a tidy up, got a heap of old drums to get rid of. I gotta get the fan off, the fan motor off the air seeder because it's been leaking a little bit of oil. We're heading down to Adelaide this weekend. I wanna take it down there. Someone's gonna chuck a seal kit through that for me. We got barley in the shed over here. Wouldn't mind reloading the chassis bin. We got weeds to spray around the yard. I don't know guys, we got plenty to do. So let's get into it. <laughs> Might run those old 110s in quickly and get rid of those for recycling. Guess I'll give the wife's car a wash while I'm at it. Better do the right thing. All right, let's go down and see if we can get that hydraulic motor off the air seater. The uh, 54 Aug is getting a bit of a, a rebuild job at the moment, getting a new run of bearings along the top here on that shaft. And I think they're talking about dropping out this flighting because it's and maybe putting some new stuff in because it's starting to get fairly thin, especially on the end here, but I think they want to get it out and have a look at it and just see how it looks. Right, 
she's off she's here um uh, i'm pretty sure well it's been leaking out this front seal here because when i pulled the fan off i'll try and put a photo up of it but it was just caked back here with sort of oily looking dirt all just stuck to that area so anyway like i said i'm going to take this down to adelaide with me i know a guy down there who really helped us out with uh, something on the nitro spray when we had a problem and Honestly, it's just going to be easier for him to pull this apart and reseal it. I don't have any instructions or anything for it. And last time I tried to pull something like this apart, it ended up costing me about two grand, I reckon. So it's just easier to get someone else to do it. But yeah, we'll get it resealed, chuck it back on with the new fan, and hopefully she'll be tickety boo. Now, if you guys are not curing and smoking your own bacon, get on board it. It is awesome. Alrighty, guys. Sorry, I just had to have a bit of an interlude there to put my bacon on, but I also went for a drive, went out with the agronomist. We just did a bit of a scout around the canola. I was just a bit worried that it's a bit lacklustre. It seems like it's struggling a little bit, but we've sort of had a look at it and, you know, we've fed it again. We've given it a bit more urea, so... We just got to sit back now and see what happens. He's sort of saying that he reckons it's really going to get moving now, you know, within the next couple of weeks. So it's just at that stage, things are going to start warming up a little bit and hopefully it'll really start taking off. But we also went for a drive uh, out in the beans, just making sure that we haven't got another flush of ryegrass coming through or anything like that. And it all looks pretty good. We're pretty happy with how everything's looking. So um, I'm just going to go get the other ute down here and we're going to spray some weeds in the yard now. <laughs> Definitely getting a bit thin there, isn't it? It's definitely getting on the thinner side, so I guess, I don't know, we'll have to make some decisions. How many eggs do you reckon there was? Lots? How many? There was six? That's excellent. That's excellent. <laughs> okay, folks, I am gonna call this a video here. I should have enough footage there to make a video out of, and it's a little bit different content at this time of the year, because honestly, it can be a bit cold and miserable out, and a lot of the time what we're doing is not particularly exciting. We just might be down the shed fixing something or, you know, doing something like that. But if there is anything that you guys like seeing more of or you want to see more of, don't hesitate to throw it down in the comments. I'm all ears. I'm open to hearing to, you know, what you guys want to uh, see more of. At the end of the day, you guys are the one watching the, uh, the content. So chuck it down in the comments. There's definitely been some requests that I've had that I'm still waiting to get around to, to making those videos. So don't think I've forgotten about you. I haven't forgotten about you. But once again, that's it, guys. Take it easy. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.